and like this, and like this, yeah! Yeah, 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 very nervous. Let's do this. Quiet, everything quiet. Hello and welcome to the third lesson, the third day in this introductory series to the Feldenkrais method of somatic education. My channel is called Feldenkrais with Alphonse and I'm Alphonse. Today we will continue with the theme we already started to make the chest more flexible, better organized, function better in a biomechanical sense, in a neuro, in how the brain, uh, how we what is the brain, right? I cannot feel my brain. How we direct movement, how we think about movement, how we sense movement, how we feel about movement. If you have some pains or you feel you're restricted in your chest or in your lower back because of tension, muscular tension, you feel like you're in a cast, you would like to have more freedom, this is a lesson for you. If you haven't tried the lessons before, please have a look at the lessons before, work through them, it's a series and every lesson builds upon the next one. So let's get to it. I'm very excited that we are here together again today and let's get on the floor. Please take your place on your back on the floor and we will start in a minute. As always, you will need a carpet, you will need some space on the floor. It should be cozy, you should be comfortable on the floor. You can do this lesson in the evening or in the morning, whenever you have time. For the duration of this lesson, you should be more or less undisturbed. So you have uh, me time, you time. All right, so once on the floor, let's review what we did so far just very shortly. Usually we work with the feet standing and then we did a couple of variations on lifting the head and we really explored into lifting the head how the shoulders, not so much the shoulders but more the spine, how the spine is lifted away, from, peeled away from the floor, how the space between the head and the floor becomes larger when you lift the head, how the point of contact on the floor shifts and moves when you lift the head, how how it feels like to roll up a little bit, how it is when your hands, interlaced fingers, help to lift your head, how, how that plays together, how the eyes coordinate this movement or make it worse, how the breathing improves this movement or make it worse. We did a little bit of pelvic movement, of rolling the pelvis, and the combination of all these things. So we worked from the head downwards and improved lifting of the head which will of course engage the muscles on your front side and at the same time you have to let go on your back side. So coordination, movement organization. So today we will focus more, we do a couple of things, more things with the head arm and arm positions to learn more about lifting the head and about this whole business of uh, organizing the chest. So just take a couple of seconds to be on your back, to feel how you're lying on your back, how aware, 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 aware you are of how you're lying. If you feel like you're a little, if you're straight or a little bit tilted to the side on the floor, what kind of sensations you get from the floor, from the contact to the floor, how you contact the floor. I hope you have a cozy, warm floor and not a cold, hard one. Just, it should be just right. So you can feel yourself, but it's not too soft and not too hard. Then just lift your head a little bit, just um, for a first movement, see how it is like to lift your head today, tonight or this morning, whenever, 
whatever time it is for you now, for me it's evening, Saturday evening. And maybe you can still feel the improvement from the last lesson. For me, I, I can, I think it's fantastic with, that we do this, that we really work through a couple of days and one day builds upon the next day and it, it, just, it just keeps getting better. I really like this series. I'm, I'm very excited to do this. Okay, then please bring your feet to standing if your feet don't stand already. Interlace your hands and bring your interlaced hands to the back of your head or behind the back of your head so that your head is resting in your hands and in the first day, the first lesson we had this angle, how much the elbows should point towards the ceiling so find the best angle for you and then lift your head, just try how it is to lift your head today. in this center, center line and together with your breath, so on an out breath, preferably with your eyes looking downwards towards your feet. Just feel how it is tonight to roll up and come back when your head is carried by your hands. and then rest your head. Maybe now in the beginning, let's make the, the connection. There's this classic, this classic lesson. It's a very classic flexion lesson. You will find it in many books about the Feldenkrais method. So we'll just review this lesson shortly, in a way, or I introduce you to the lesson. It's also in my book, in my Feldenkrais book. Uh, please, with your right hand, get to hold your right knee. So you probably need to lift your right foot off the floor. So you can casually, very nicely, with your right hand, touch your right knee somewhere. It doesn't really matter. There's many different positions you could take with your hand on your knee. See the palm of your right hand, it fits on your right knee some, somehow. Maybe it fits on the kneecap very nicely. You can hold your right knee from the outside, you can hold it from the inside, you can hold it from across the top, you can even hold it from behind the knee. Doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> of course it has, however you hold your knee will have an influence on what you feel, what you sense and how the movement is going in the details. So maybe you, as I am talking, you can try all these different kind of grips where to hold your knee, where to hold your leg. And please have your lower leg just hanging, your right foot just very relaxed, the right ankle very relaxed. And please have your left foot standing. Don't, don't elongate your left foot. Left foot should be standing. And then when you hold your right knee, Try to let go of your right leg, so the right leg is more or less relaxed, relax, entspannt. And move your right knee a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. So there's many lessons about this, of course. We can go very deep into this, but it's just an introduction and to the right and to the left a little bit so you can feel the ball, you know. Your right upper leg has one big bone inside. The femur, it's called in Latin. It's upper leg bone. And then his muscles around it, of course. I, so I keep talking and you keep exploring. And the upper leg bone ends with a ball joint with a big ball in your hip socket and that's because you can really twist and whisk <laughs> whisk your leg around to the right and to the left. For some is they can go far, for some they can't go very far. 
I had one woman, she could put the right knee to the floor on the right side. Very, very flexible, but it's also genetics. Most people cannot without rolling the pelvis. So this is one thing, please keep your pelvis stable. So it's don't roll your pelvis, the pelvis should not roll, your upper body should not twist, but your upper body should be fairly straight on the floor, your pelvis should be stable, and it's just the right leg that's moving, that you whisk around, stir around, stir the hip joint. And also try to bring the right knee closer to your right armpit or to your chest and see where, where, what, where can you bring your right knee without rolling your pelvis. Maybe use your left hand on your left upper, how you call this, from the ilium, iliac crest, the, the furthest point of your hip bone on the left, just somewhere on your hip so you can be sure that you don't roll your hip, but you just move your leg. So, so you get an image, an internal sensation of your hip joint and where you can move your knee, what are the areas you can move your knee to. All right, and then let go of the leg. Just take a short break. Then bring your feet to standing again with your right hand again. Take your right knee. Bring your right knee a little bit closer to your right armpit or your chest. And feel the further you pull the right knee, the more your pelvis tilts backwards. So in the last lesson we tilted the pelvis by its own and now it's it's kind of the leg that tilts the pelvis backwards. Can you feel that? You become a little bit more round. Your lower back comes closer to the floor if you pull on your... Don't pull too much, just a tiny little bit. All right, then let go again. Now, bring your left hand, the palm of your left hand, underneath or behind the back of your head so that your head is resting in your left hand. So if your neck is relaxed, your head will roll to the right. Can you feel that? If you have super much tension in your neck, you will just look upwards to the ceiling and nothing will happen. But if you relax, because your hand is more a shape of a wedge, right? Your hand isn't the shape of a towel. It's not the shape of a cushion, it's more the shape like a potato wedge. So when you place your hand underneath your head, your head will roll to the right, should roll to the right. Except when you have tension in your neck or you hold your neck. <clears throat> so the back of your head is in your hand and bring your left elbow towards the ceiling. And with your right hand, get hold of your right knee. This is the starting position of this movement. And so explore how it is to lift the head with just the left arm. And the elbow towards the right knee. And the right knee towards the left elbow. So there's no objective of touching them both together. They just go towards each other. And always let go again and come back to the floor and then have a chance to have a new movement. To come up again. And do this like five times or ten times. Or when you do it really slow. Let's break this up a little bit further. Please come to a rest. Maybe you only had a chance to do it like three or four times. That's okay. 
just take a short rest. Then bring your feet to standing again. Bring your left hand behind your head. So now, now let your eyes point towards the ceiling. Let your nose point towards the ceiling. Bring your left elbow towards the ceiling. And then try to lift, just lift the head with, with one arm, with your left arm. And do it on an out breath, maybe. And with your eyes, help. With your eyes, look towards your feet. Do this a couple of times and make sure that your neck has a chance to become long. Make sure that your whole backside can become long. Like you have a feeling you're pulling, on the, you're pulling your backside long. You're elongating your backside. And you're making your front side shorter. So whenever you lift the head, focus on the point of contact on the floor in your neck. So it's not a sit-up, it's just the beginning, just the lifting of the head with your left hand. And let go again. I hope that's okay for your left shoulder. Let's do this with, your, with the right hand. Bring your right hand behind your head. The left hand can go wherever you want, on the floor, on the side, wherever. Both feet are standing. Right hand behind the head. Right elbow towards the ceiling. And start to lift your head. And try really to make a long neck. Look downwards. You peeling off. You Peeling yourself from the floor, you're lifting your head, concentrate on the lifting, just all the ribs, you see, you have like 7 vertebrae in the neck, you have 12 vertebrae in the chest, you have 5 vertebrae in the lower back and all of them work together and there's like hundreds of muscles involved in this whole movement. And the brain has to coordinate all them and have to make pathways for this coordination. And it's not a strengthening exercise, it's like a coordination exercise. All right, so take a short break. Then with your left hand, take hold of your left knee. You can put your head down on the floor on your right hand, also relax the right hand. With the left hand, get hold of your left knee and then lift your left knee, just explore your left hip joint a little bit like before, the knee to the outside, to the inside, a little bit up, left knee a little bit closer towards the left armpit. Explore, explore a little bit your left hip joint. Then bring your right hand behind the back of your head. And this time lift your right head. Let the head be lifted from your right hand, your right arm. And bring the right elbow towards your left knee. And the left knee towards your right elbow. Again, it doesn't need to touch, it's just the direction and you can really feel all those things. It's a, it's a, we built this, this movement and there's so many things you can be aware of or have a look at. So what you're doing with your eyes, with your breath, with your chest, the front of your chest, the back of your chest, with your hip joints, with your leg, with your, with your arms, with your shoulders.
Maybe you can even help with your right foot. Help the pelvis tilt backwards, roll backwards a little bit to, to help press the middle of your chest more towards the floor, just a little bit. Until it becomes very easy to get become round, to flex yourself with a flexion in supine, in lying on your back, and then release this flexion again and come to lie flat on the floor. And then you round yourself up again. And this simple movement becomes very complex because we can think of so many things. And at the same time it becomes even simpler because it feels easier, it feels lighter to do it. And then bring down your legs, elongate your legs and come to lie straight on the floor and just take a short rest. Of course, yes, it's, it's good to repeat this lesson. You can repeat it with the video or you can memorize the movements and practice on your own. You can practice with music if you like. And then always come back to the video to see, not always, but sometimes come back to the video to see if you missed anything, if I said something you didn't hear in the first time and develop until it's not interesting anymore, until you you feel you're knowledgeable about this movement. And then we have to introduce new movements to make it fresh, to make it interesting again. So please, please bring your feet to standing. This time, turn your head to the right. So you're lying on your back with the head turned to the right and bring your left hand behind your head in a way that your left hand, the palm of your left hand is touching your right cheek or your right ear. So you're sliding your hand underneath your head and the floor. So your, head, your hand is touching your right cheek, yes. So this is a, a, new, a new starting position, something novel, something unusual. And in this way, start to lift your head. With your left hand, your left arm, lift your head while you're looking to the right. <laughs> this is new, right? And see, how, how can you do it? How can you make it easy? How can you let go of your head and be your head be a passenger? Like you carry your head. Be careful. Don't strain. Don't make it a chiro chiropractic adjustment. Don't, don't like make sounds with your neck. Don't adjust your neck. Just lift your head very gently. and see how that works. And then bring your head down again, take a short rest. That was interesting, right? Let's make it even more interesting. Lift your left arm and bring it to rest over your head. Like elongate your left arm over your head. Bring your left arm on the floor over your head. Look to the right and then lift your head and your arm together. And come back down again. Try this a couple of times. And take a rest. Just a little, just a small movement. 
maybe stretch out your legs if you like to. Then bring your feet to stand again and we try this on the other side. So please look to your left, just roll your head to point your nose to the left and your right hand, slide your right hand under your head in between the head and the floor so your right palm is touching your left cheek. And in this starting position, start to lift your head again. And see how that is. It's a different organization for your, for your neck. The, the neck is in a different twist than usual. But still it's seven vertebrae in the neck, 12 in the chest and five in the lumbar spine. Again, don't, it's maybe tempting to do some adjustments and to do like chiropractic movements, but don't do it. Just be very gentle and very easy movement. Take a break. Then bring your feet to standing again, your right arm overhead, lie down your right arm, fairly straight if that's possible, on the floor, look with your head to the left and then lift your arm and your head together and let it down again. Lift them together a couple of times in your own pace, you can do it you can do it like half an inch, a centimeter, or you can do it a little bit further, or nothing at all, or more. Just as much as you find it interesting to do, to explore. Then take a short rest, elongate your legs. See how that changed your neck maybe, your shoulders. Leave your legs long if you like. Bring both arms over your head on the floor and try to lift, just to lift your head and keep the arms over your head. Just lift the head. So maybe use your breath, maybe you use your eyes, you use the distance between the head and the floor, you use the contact point of your neck to the floor. Bring both feet to standing. Let's try this with standing feet. Let's see if there's a difference between long legs and standing legs. Flexed hip joints, more flexible pelvis. For me it's fairly the same, I have to say. Alright, then interlace, uh, just bring your hands down again, take a short break. Then interlace your fingers, bring the interlaced fingers or hands behind the back of your head, elbows pointing towards the ceiling, lift your head. See how that is? Then just keep your right hand behind your head, your left hand on your right knee and lift your head with your right elbow towards your right knee. Interesting, huh? Then leave your right hand behind your head, 
right hand behind your head. With your left hand, take your left knee and bring your right elbow towards your left knee, lifting the head. Also interesting. It's a little bit different. A little bit when you take your right knee, it's maybe more of a side bending, more of a straight line. When you take your left knee, it's more of a diagonal, more of a twist. I think we will do some twisting lessons soon. Not the next one, but soon. Take a short break. Just feel how you're lying on the floor. This is, makes a big difference for my shoulders, actually. My shoulders lie much flatter on the floor. They feel much relaxed there. How is it for you? Okay, bring your uh, feet to stand, left hand behind the head. Take, with your right hand, take your left knee and lift your hand. Uh, lift your head and your hand <laughs> and bring your left elbow towards your left knee and the left knee towards your left elbow. Then with the right hand take your right knee, left hand still behind the head and bring your left elbow towards your right knee. Or the right knee towards your left elbow. And let go again. Elongate your legs, your arms. Next to you, take a break. Just feel how your contact with the floor is right now. If anything changed, how your spine is lying on the floor. My spine is much closer to the floor. I have this kind of sensation right now. I can feel the middle of my spine really came down towards the floor. It's so nice to, to feel these differences. And of course, it feels nice to be more relaxed, more at ease, and I hope so, better organized. So let's wrap this lesson up, bring both feet to standing, interlace your hands, put your, bring your hands behind the back of your head, not in the neck, the, the elbows towards the ceiling, and lift your head again, just feel how you lift your head how this affects your whole spine, how much you can feel, how you are aware of this movement, to think, to move, to sense, to feel. All right, then take a last rest, elongate your legs, just feel how you're lying now on the floor. For me, I, I, feel, I even feel my chest is, the flexibility of the chest changes how I perceive my voice, my speaking. I, I feel it resonates more deeply into my chest. It's quite, quite an interesting sensation. Just take like a minute, half a minute, a minute. Do we have this luxury here on YouTube to just have like half a minute? Half a minute of nothing, just on the floor. You can close your eyes if you want. Feel inside. I feel some tingling. It's like 
I'm refreshed in some way. I do this in class. I give students time to rest. <laughs> I myself, when I did the Feldenkrais professional training program, when I it's like a four-year training program to become a Feldenkrais a certified Feldenkrais practitioner, and I slept a lot. To be honest, I really enjoyed these kind of breaks. And sometimes I just <laughs> fell asleep. I didn't wake up while the others continued with the lesson. And I can tell you, this, this is a very, very enjoyable sleep because other people are working and you hear somebody talking in the distance and everything is relaxed and it's okay to sleep. <laughs> and then at some point you wake up and Oh, something happening, you have to move. So please, open your eyes, open your eyes, roll over one side and come to sit. See if you can balance your head on top when you're sitting. And then please also come up to standing. So this is always the end of the Feldenkrais lesson, of a Feldenkrais lesson. We need to get up to standing again so we can move in this world. But just take a couple of seconds just to be able to feel how you're standing, how your head is balanced on top of your shoulders, and then there's the spine, how your shoulders are balanced on top of your pelvis, how the pelvis is balanced on top of your legs and your feet. In one way, how you stack everything on top of each other. On the other hand, it's like a, it's a muscular, a floating relationship. It's not just stacked like bricks, but it's the bones are floating inside the muscles. It's an easy way to hold yourself upright, to balance your head on top of your shoulders so that you can move easily in any direction. You can move forwards and backwards and to the side and you can go down and up and just move around at ease. And with this I conclude this third lesson today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed teaching it, providing you with the information, guiding you through the lesson. Please if you like this video, you see this like button, this little thumbs up button, like this button, give it a good rub. <laughs> As John Hill used to say, or is saying every day, rub the button a little bit. Leave a comment if you would like to share your experience or your thoughts. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Link for the next video or for this series is in this description. And see you in the next video. It's